Hello and welcome to the Tough Girl Podcast, which is all about motivating and inspiring you. I'm your host, Sarah Williams. The Tough Girl Podcast is sponsorship and ad-free thanks to the monthly financial support of patrons. To find out more about supporting the Tough Girl Podcast, please visit Patreon, P-A-T-R-E-O-N.com forward slash Tough Girl Podcast and help me to increase the amount of female role models in the media. All patrons will get their name on a dedicated patrons page on the Tough Girl website. All female patrons, $5 and above, are invited to join the closed Facebook group, the Tough Girl Tribe. Today, I'm delighted we're going to be speaking to Zara Mahmood. Zara is passionate about getting people outdoors, and she shares her walks on Instagram, where she's known as the Hill Walking Hijabi. My name is Zara Mahmood. I'm known as the Hill Walking Hijabi on Instagram. During the week, I work as a chartered accountant in the public sector in Scotland. And on weekends, I like to get outside evenings and weekends. I um, like to get outside as much as possible, especially with hill walking or walking in general, to be honest. Did you come from, have you come from like quite a sporty family? Have you always been going out into the hills and into walking? Oh, not at all. Um, I only discovered it believe it or not, about four years ago, four or five years ago, I was actually studying for my professional exams and I was finding them so difficult. And two of the girls that I was studying with, Pamela and Fiona, they thought I would benefit from getting outside, out in the mountains and hills and just kind of clearing my head and hopefully that would kind of almost reset me mentally and physically. Um, So that's when I initially got introduced to it. So that was a wee while ago now. And it actually worked in terms of letting me like giving me that confidence to pass my exams but it didn't work in terms of getting me hooked straight away because it, they started off with a, a with a Monroe which was not great for someone who's never done hill walking or any kind of physical exercise before that anyway so um, that was a shock to the system to say the least. Oh God, tell us a little bit more about your first experience going into the hills. I think I was totally naive to it. So first, initially, when they mentioned hill walking or going up a mountain, I honestly thought they meant like actual climbing up with a harness and everything. I thought, oh, no, no, that's too scary. That's not for me. And then when they explained it, no, no, you're just walking up. I thought, OK, yeah, that sounds doable. I can I can walk up. I'm sure that'll be fine. Totally naive to the fact that they'd suggested Ben Lomond, um, which is obviously a Monroe in Scotland so I started off and I'd heard a few people doing Ben Lomond before so I thought it was genuinely doable for someone who's never been up a mountain and never done any exercise before so um, I struggled that day I had no breakfast I kind of was I was in the right gear because they had taken me out beforehand and got me the right gear and stuff so I was like equipped with the right boots and stuff but I just I, ha- I hadn't mentally prepared myself for how difficult it was going to be physically in terms of no breakfast and I had the worst snacks ever that was probably more likely to make you sick as well so yeah it was horrendous I was just kind of aware the whole time up that I was not only slowing them down but I was also on the receiving end of people just staring at me and I don't know if that was because of the way that I looked or if it was because of my fitness it was probably a mixture of both so yeah that was at the whole way up it was just kind of like stop start me threatening to go back to the car and my friend trying to bribe me and trying to bully me almost to get to the top in a friendly way so yeah I I basically had to be laid up that mountain. (laughs) What was it like when you got to the top? Oh it was amazing and I have to say like I didn't take any pictures throughout this whole walk because I was Honestly, like I was just so, so like struggling so much that I didn't even think to take any pictures. Um, and at the top, I think there's I've got two pictures from this walk. I think a couple of pictures from this walk, and um, one of them is just this look of absolute glee on my face. And anyone looking at that, you would think, oh, she's absolutely enjoyed that hill walk. She's loving it at the top. But actually, it was just sheer relief that I'd made it because honestly, didn't think they were going to let me turn back or stop. They weren't going to let me like, you know, give up. They wanted me to get to the top. So it was utter like relief at the top. And, you know, when I look back at that picture, I just think, oh my God, that was such a good day on Ben Loman. And I've been back and done Ben Loman a couple of times since then. And I've never got such a good day or a view. And I just kind of look at that picture and think, I didn't even appreciate that view at that time. So I think if you look at that picture, you'd think I was enjoying it a lot more than I did. But it was honestly, it was just relief at the top. What made you want to go back and do more hill walking? So what did you get out of that first walk that you thought, yeah, do you know what? I want to do this again. 
So I think out of that first walk, initially I just, I, so I didn't go back for about six months to a year after that because I didn't, I just didn't think it was for me. Not only was there not people that looked like me, but there was also just like my fitness and I had just held them back. They had told me it was going to take like half a day at the most and I ended up taking the majority of the day to get to the top. So I just didn't think it was for me. But I do remember feeling that whole time that I was walking, um, which is part of that struggle, is that I wasn't thinking about anything else other than just getting to the top and using my feet to take one step at a time and getting to the top and it was about six months to a year later I was going through a difficult time in my life again and it was again the same friends Pam and Fiona they said right let's go outside let's um, go up another hill and do something you know um, it'll hopefully help so I had agreed to it but I said obviously no Monroe's because during that six months to a year I had been doing other things like the kilt walk and I joined a gym just to try and get my fitness up so yeah, I had said no Monroe's, so they took me up a smaller hill, and I, ha- I want to say it was Conic Hill, but I can't remember exactly which one it was, but um, I just enjoyed it so much. It was just that way that, you know, that whole time that I was trying to get up to the top of the summit there, I wasn't thinking about anything else. I was just concentrating on one foot in front of the other, just, you know, enjoying the views, taking it all in, and just enjoying being away from almost like the city, the busy, the busy parts of life, um, mentally and physically. And, you know, the fact that you have no reception, it just felt like you were in this kind of cocoon almost. Yeah, your friends sound amazing. (laughs) Getting up the hill. You talked about gear initially that they took you, they took you out shopping to get the, Mm. to get the gear. Tell us a little bit more about how your gear has changed. What sort of stuff are you using? So, at that point, I had bought, like, the. they said, okay, well, you don't know if you're going to do this, like, you know, every weekend or whatever, so don't invest too much. So they took me to Decathlon, um, and uh, they kind of had recommended a few things. They said, just get, like, cheap kind of hiking boots that will do you for a few walks um, and get, like, you know, a base layer, um, some kind of waterproof uh, if you need it, although it was summer, so I didn't really need it. Um, and so a jacket and, and, a wee, and a wee hiking bag so kind of like a really small kind of one like a half day one um, so that was it, what I had initially and I think I'm glad I made that decision because obviously I didn't go again for about six months to a year so it was the right decision at that time but since then I have definitely spent a good chunk of money trying to <laughs> invest in um, more uh, kind of kit because obviously I am doing it more regularly so those kind of boots I still I think I still have those boots I think I passed them down to my niece um but I have kind of more um sturdier boots uh scarpa I think they are um I have um like a proper really good kind of quality waterproof jacket I even have poles now walking poles um and it's just like all sorts now it used to be that I I at that time I would probably go and spend most of my money on them um, kind of uh, just like you know either work clothes or kind of going out clothes but now most of my money goes on to hill walking here. Were there many other of your friends who were into hill walking and you know doing this at the weekend you know this this hobby so obviously you've got Pamela and Fiona which sounds awesome but were you connecting with anybody else going out did you go out by yourself did you join any walking groups? No no I didn't Um, so some of my friends were kind of interested in getting fit but not specifically going out or up hills to do that so maybe other mediums like the gym and things like that but no so what I did was I signed up for the kilt walk again that was that was with Pamela we did that almost I think it's almost 26 miles um, through Glasgow to raise money for charity so we did that but other than that no there was no other kind of influence in my life for hill walking at that point. How has your confidence developed, like, um, in terms of building up the skills that you need? Like, is that just something that's very gradually, that, that is being done very gradually? Or is it something that you're very aware on, that you're focusing on when you go out, whether that's map reading or doing different types of walks? Mm-hmm. So I think initially my confidence probably grew more um, because I realised, obviously, I'd bitten off more than I can chew by trying to do a mineral when my fitness wasn't great and obviously I'd never been hill walking because even if you're used to walking, walking up a hill is a completely different story to walking flat. So um, I think I realised that I needed to kind of strip strip it back. If this is something that I wanted to enjoy and I was benefiting from, then I really needed to kind of strip it back. So starting off when I got into it again about six months later, I started looking at kind of smaller hills 
Corbett's as well. Then I kind of built myself up to Corbett's. And then I kind of only in the last year have I really done a lot of minerals. And um, before that, I was doing smaller hills in Corbett's. And I, I think that's what helped build up most of my confidence, just being outside and having that confidence that, you know, I'm even going to get to the summit and I'm not going to turn back and I'm not going to kind of complain the whole way. Um, so initially, I think that kind of just helped my confidence just in terms of being outside and feeling like I belonged out there. And then from then, now I've been trying to do more kind of varied walks, not just Monroe's, but like longer distance ones. So I've done that 17 kind of mile one in Glen Finglas. I've done ones in like kind of, uh, you know, like snowy kind of weather where the snow's up to your knees. Map reading and navigation is definitely something that I'm aware of that I'm not very good at because I do rely on my either my phone or a printed out kind of instructions or directions. So that is something that I definitely want to do because I think obviously you can't rely on that. You need to have that knowledge yourself. So there are certain areas where I think I still obviously need to develop. But in terms of just initially for me, because I didn't grow up with this, because I came into it late in life, just even feeling like this is you know, something that um, is for me and something somewhere where I belong um, was just trying to build that up slowly. Yeah. How accessible has you, have you found, have you found the hiking? How welcoming has the hiking, hiking community been to you? So I think there's probably two ways to answer that. So one is probably online, which is through my Instagram the um, that I kind of share my journey with people. Online, I've never really had any issues. You do get the odd comment here and there in your direct messages um, just because you wear a headscarf. If people think that, you know, they, you know, even it's not even in that hill walking community. It's just in general here. You're kind of used to getting those messages. But in general, the online, the um, reception has been great. People have been so welcoming, encouraging, supportive, especially the women, I feel, have been a lot more as well. Some men too, but mostly women. Um, and then... Out, actually outdoors so outdoors I would say I've never had any you know incidents where you know there's racism or Islamophobia or anything but I, I do get a lot of stares and that kind of doesn't stop I don't think and it's because most of the time I would say 99% of the time when I've been outdoors in the hills I don't see anyone else that looks like me so I think out of all the hill walks that I've done over the last four or five years I probably in that time saw two women different times two women that wear a hijab that are outdoors and in that time um you know even without the hijab an Asian woman um South Asian woman I've probably seen maybe a handful of times so that's over four years um and these are popular walks that I've done as well so probably the ones that are more accessible to people that are not used to going outdoors so I would say you know, there's two there's two ways to look at that. Like online, you know, people are great, they're encouraging, but in in the outdoors there are a lot of stairs. There is a lot of kind of assumptions made. So if you do kind of stop, you know, if you're stopping for a break, are you stopping for a wee snack? Sometimes you get talking to people, which is great and I'll I love um speaking to new people and stuff. So, you know, when they start speaking to you, you can tell there's an inherent kind of stereotype there that they're making because you know sometimes I've had the question even while being kitted out in all the gear that kind of we spoke about you know you get that kind of question or I've had that kind of question where oh is this your first walk and I'll be like and I'll try and turn it on its head or kind of make them realize why why are they saying that because I'll say oh first time you know doing this one but not first time hill walking and I'll kind of just kind of leave it like that and I think then people realize that stereotype that they've made because you wouldn't let's be honest, you wouldn't make that or they wouldn't make that stereotype to anybody else really that they've just met. They're just making that because it's the first time they've seen someone maybe that looks like me outdoors. So there's more kind of those what you would call microaggressions or stereotypical behaviour stares that you get that can sometimes make you feel uncomfortable. I've not let it put me off yet, but you know it can be sometimes uncomfortable to experience and sometimes you just kind of want to get up the hill. You don't want to have to deal with that. Tell me more about um, about starting your Instagram page and, and why you wanted to, to share more about your passion. So I found that actually before I had this Instagram page, I had one just that was my name and um, I was just kind of sharing, you know, the typical day-to-day life, um, which I enjoyed as well. But I found that as I was getting more into hill walking, most of my pictures were turning into me out in the hills. Um, and I thought, and then I started connecting more with people that, you know, where 
like-minded and we're going out in the hills just as well that you can support support them and they can cheer you on but also you get kind of get ideas of what walks to do from what they're doing as well so I found that I was kind of having this kind of natural gravitating towards more of the hill walking side of things so um I then decided I kept that page but I decided to make a kind of hill walking page one of my sisters actually said to me when I was kind of coming back from one of my walks and I was just talking and she was asking a bit more about it and I said you know you know it's a, it's a bit of a shame I was trying to I think I was trying to convince them to come out with me and my sisters and I was saying it's a bit of a shame that you only see I don't see anyone that kind of looks like me you should really come and she said oh you're she kind of made the comment oh you're the hell walking hijabi and that's kind of when it stuck and she said you know you should share that and show that maybe you will uh, you know um give people more encouragement or you know show them that it can be done um, and at that point, I wasn't thinking about the latter. I was just thinking, oh, that's a cool name. I'll, that's what I'll call myself. So I made that kind of Instagram with that name and it kind of just went from there. Um, but it is like, like I say, like a few people have commented on that. And I do say that it is a shame that in, in 2020, the, the the in front of my name is not kind of challenged because there should be a lot more. I shouldn't be the hill walking hijabi. I should just be one of. Like so that's the point. That's the bit that kind of of my name that I wish, you know, was not different in terms of my name, but different in terms of there was a lot more people that um Muslim women that felt that they could get outdoors for whatever reason. Yeah. But I think, you know, doing what you're doing and, and sharing your Instagram posts and, and sharing what you're doing, because you've also started a blog as, as well, um, mm-hmm. is a great way to hopefully encourage more Muslim women to, to get out there and, and, and get walking. But tell us more about some of the walks that you've done, like which have been the most challenging, you know, which ones have you got on your, do you have a goal list for certain walks that you want to do? Are you, you know, how are you sort of deciding which walks to go on? If I'm completely honest, I'm deciding on the weather in Scotland, so it totally depends on that. Um, in terms of goals or lists, I mean, I would love to complete all the Monroes at some point, um, but I'm not putting that pressure on myself because I know that I'm the type of person that if I put that pressure on myself, I'll either kind of crumble in terms of I'll be like putting, I'll be putting even more pressure on the time frame. So. I'm not paying a time frame on that. Um, I'm just thinking, you know, that's a nice goal to have at the back of my head. In terms of hard work walks, you know, the obvious answer would be Ben Nevis because I, I did do that in September last year. But it wasn't actually that hard. It was long, but it wasn't actually that hard compared to some of the other ones. Um, I, th- I would still say that my first one was the hardest walk I've ever done. That was obviously c- because of my fitness levels at that point. But there have been other ones, like, for example, I remember... The first Monroe I did after Ben Lomond was, and I'm probably going to pronounce this wrong, it was Ben Chonzi. And I remember struggling that way up. And I honestly thought at that point it was because of because of the fact that it was a Monroe. And I thought, oh, this is just going to be the struggle for every Monroe. Um, but it was actually because I was suffering from cramps that day. So, you know, it just shows you, you're, you should listen to your body because I genuinely didn't feel great that day and I didn't. Didn't wasn't that thrilled to be getting out, but I kind of wanted to go and complete a Monroe. So there's ones that I've struggled with just because of how you're feeling that day. Um, but in terms of hard walks, I would say Glen Finglas, which isn't actually all that high, but it is like 17 miles. I've done that three times now, and each time I thought I think it's going to be easier, and it's not. It's totally hard because it's like up and down so it's not like a mountain is almost like you're all you know that the hard slog is all the way up and then you're coming down so it'll be easier whereas this was constantly kind of up and down so you are kind of it's kind of more challenging especially over the longer distance so yeah I would probably say that was probably one of my hardest ones. When it does get hard out there in the hills how do you keep going what are the tips and tricks that that you use to keep you motivated to keep you moving forward? So normally I kind of tell myself you're you're closer to the top now than you are the bottom because that's when it starts to get hard is when you kind of know that the end is in sight but you can't actually see the summit yet. Um, so at that point I tell myself, right, okay, you're closer to the top than you are to the bottom, to the car park. So you might as well just keep going and you'll you'll get there soon. I take a break, I take five minutes, you know, just to start taking the scenery because I think that's really important as well, just to take that time to reflect as well. Why why am I doing this? You know, because I think we all, all, all hill workers will ask themselves that question, whether it's when their alarm rings at 
six a.m. or on their day off, or whether it's when they're kind of trudging up in rubbish weather or when they're struggling. So sometimes just taking that five minutes to take a deep breath, you know, take some snacks, take some jelly beans, take some water, and then you know you're almost kind of like refueled and uh, both in mind and body to to kind of continue. Yeah. You said when we were starting the first time you went out for, you know, the first walk that you did that you took the wrong snacks. Yeah. What, what are the snacks that you've um, like figured out are your go to snacks while you're out hill walking? So I don't think chocolate agrees with me. I, I've got a IBS. So there's certain things that can trigger, you know, um, reactions in, within me. So I don't think like mostly because I've, I've actually been sick outside as well once before um, when you're going up and I'm suffering from symptoms so um, I find chocolate doesn't work for me neither does a flask of tea or coffee so I try to stay away from anything kind of too acidic jelly beans are great I love crisps so crisps are great as well um, anything kind of like baked like granola bars or um, you know homemade ones and sandwiches so that when you're talking about the wrong snacks that was basically I took up a kebab sandwich with homemade kebabs Asian typical Asian food and that was really bad because that on an empty stomach when I've not had breakfast was not good for you because it's quite spicy um so I just felt even more kind of bloated after that so yeah so I stick to kind of lighter ones fruit kind of jelly beans crisps and then sandwiches that are kind of plain I mean it doesn't sound great um but but it does me it does the job it fuels you how do you think hill walking has impacted on other areas of your life whether that is in terms of confidence or self-belief so with the first time, even just taking the first time that I went out, um, even though that was a struggle, the fact that I reached the top, that was, I, I firmly believe that that was one of the reasons that helped me kind of pass that exam because I thought, well, if I can do that, and I struggled the whole way up, so if I can do that, I can pass an exam. Um, and I'll, I might struggle while I'm trying to, you know, study and all the rest of it and pass kind of mock exams that come before it. But I know that I can get there and I can do that. And I, and I did go on to pass all my exams um, first time for that as well. So that's just the prime example. And then the second time when I initially went out after about six months to a year, um, I was actually going through a separation, a divorce, and it was just getting all a bit too much. Everything was getting on top of me. Um, and I had such support to family and friends, but nothing seemed to work until I started getting back out there and just taking that time to Re- reflect and re- regroup for myself um, and just focusing on you know your own well-being whether it be mental or physical or spiritual and you did take on Ben Nevis Scotland's yeah. tallest tallest peak tell us more about that challenge and yeah what it was like getting out there totally so it was actually a total like it wasn't planned I, if you had told me at the beginning of last year that I was going to do Ben Nevis I would have laughed I didn't think I was ready for Ben Nevis, as silly as that sounds. Um, but it came out of the fact that I'd actually signed up for the Rob Roy Mighty Hike, which I'm not sure if you're aware of, but it's for Macmillan Cancer. And you're basically hiking uh, through the Rob Roy Way, part of the Rob Roy Way, which is about 26 miles through like kind of hills um, and streets to raise money for Macmillan Cancer. So I'd signed up for that and I was all geared up for that, all my training, kind of walking and all the rest of it that I was doing. And that's why I went back and did Glen Finglas again for the third time, because that was kind of similar to what I would be doing on the day. But unfortunately, typical Scottish weather, the week of the Rob Roy Mighty hike, it rained downpour, like actual downpour, like it was really bad, to the point that the route was flooded in areas so tents and you know marquees that were set up for the walkers couldn't be set up safely so they couldn't you know and also some kind of transport and stuff if needed you know worst case scenario to help someone that maybe got an unwell they couldn't go in safely in or out so they couldn't guarantee our safety so I totally understand why they had to cancel it but it did get cancelled and I felt terrible um, not just because I'd been training for it because you know how difficult it is once you train mentally as well as physically for something and then it doesn't happen. It's a total letdown. It just feels like you've been, everything in your kind of energy, your power has been going towards this one thing and then it's it's taken away from you, out with your control, out with anybody else's control. So I felt terrible for that reason, but I also felt terrible because I'd reached my goal, I'd raised all this money and then I wasn't going to do anything. Um, and I didn't think that was 
right either. And a lot of people went on and actually did Glenn Fingless. As uh, I, I noticed online that a lot of people that had signed up for it went and did Glenn Fingless. But I just thought, because that one, even though that was similar to the part, the Rob Roy Mighty Hike, I just thought I've done that as a training walk and I've done it twice before. So it doesn't really have that kind of wow factor. So I wanted something that I thought I could justify for the donations and justify all my training for as well. So I then started speaking to a few friends and asked for ideas. And they said, why don't you do Ben Nevis? And I thought... Um, no, that sounds horrendous. <laughs> but I come ready for that. Um, and they were saying, why not? You know, you've done all these other Monroes. Ben Nevis is just a Monroe at the end of the day. Yes, it's the highest one, but it's actually got a path the whole way up. So in some respects, it might be, quotation marks, easier than other Monroes. Um, so just, you can do it and kind of try to will me on. So yeah, that's how it came about. I said, I, I was totally, it wasn't even, I didn't even have a date in mind. I didn't, I told people, I think I maybe mentioned to a few people, I don't even think I might put it on my Instagram as this is what I'm doing until like a few days before, but I was literally weather watching, it was September and I was literally weather watching when is when is a good day going to come and luckily we got a good day and it had, and it was a few good days leading up to it so you knew that there was going to be no water or, you know, ball, gate, ball factor there, which it turned out it was a whole kind of stony bouldery path the whole way up anyway so it was fine yeah that's how it happened and I just kind of woke up like two days before and I thought right this is the day that I'm doing it and that was it pack and bag went up did it I managed to do it I was I was on a total high afterwards I thought I can't believe I've just done that obviously typical I got like views from one side of Ben Nevis for like about five seconds before the clouds came in um so I didn't get much of a view but it was just amazing being up there it was I was totally unexpected I think which is why it felt even more special did you go with any other people or did you head off by yourself so I went with one of my friends and we had signed up for the mighty hike together so we then decided to do bed nervous together you mentioned that you were doing some training for your for your hiking and you'd obviously mentioned you know previously early on that you weren't doing any exercise any fitness and that you'd you know eventually when you did get into hill walking you started you know going to the gym what other exercises have you been doing are you still going to the gym is it just a case of going out walking or do you like commute to work like walking or ride a bike or anything else like that so I try to do as much walking as I can because I just think I enjoy it a lot more. I think if you're trying to get fit or trying to do exercise, it's great if you enjoy things like the gym or enjoy things like, you know, actual workouts or weights. Um, and don't get me wrong, I do enjoy that sometimes, but I can't do that as a daily, uh, as my daily kind of fitness or exercise because I would just kind of get fed up of that. And um, what I do really enjoy is walking. So especially in lockdown so I've been taking advantage of the initially when it when we went into lockdown taking advantage of the one one time a day exercise by going out and doing like about maybe 5k or five miles of walking slash jogging and I recently as well um, got a bike so I've been trying to go out on that a lot more and build up my confidence on that especially on roads other than hill walking yeah it's mostly walking I do I do enjoy going to the gym every now and again and I do enjoy like a workout with weights but um, it's not something that I would go to every day and swimming as well occasionally I kind of going swimming because that kind of really works out every muscle in your body doesn't it and you end up feeling so sore <laughs> everywhere and muscles you never knew you had so um, yeah I tried to keep it varied but right now obviously we are kind of limited just in the situation that we're in so luckily I've got quite a few parks near me so I've just kind of been doing as much walking slash jogging slash cycling as I can. So Zara I want to mix things up a little bit now I want to ask you some quick fire questions are you ready? Yep go for it. Are you a morning or evening type of person? Morning. What time do you wake up? So it depends if I'm working I'll wake up between half seven and half eight just now because I'm working from home on the weekends probably about nine. Right now. What time do you go to bed? Oh, it can be it can be bad sometimes. Um, normally around about about eleven and twelve, eleven to twelve. But do you have a morning routine that you like to follow during the working week? I like to get up, have a shower, kind of change my clothes, go and log on into work, and then do work for about an hour before I eat breakfast. Because I'm the type of person that can't be eat breakfast as soon as they wake up. So I like that's kind of my routine in the morning when I'm working. Um, and on the weekend it just kind of depends what I've got on but um, yeah it's varied for example today I got up I kind of went out shopping did the food shop and then came home and watched had breakfast and watched a film so <laughs> it just depends what you've got on yeah what well, do you drink tea or coffee tea what well, do you have a favorite movie 
Mm, I wouldn't say I have a favourite movie. Um, Would you like binge watch Netflix or Amazon Prime or anything? Yeah, I like to binge watch. Um, I just recently watched Little Fires Everywhere on Amazon Prime, which was really good. What about a book? Do you have a favourite book um, that you've read or listened to on audio that's inspired you or encouraged you or that you sort of would reread again and again? Do you know what I really like? I think it's because it's this is a dystopian novel, but um, I really like Margaret Atwood's The Handmaid's Tale. And I read that before it came out on Amazon and then I reread it again, which I've never really done with a book. So I reread it again. And then when The Testaments came out, I went and got that and re- read it straight away as well. So I've, I've really enjoyed that. And I don't know if it's because it's set as if it's as if it would never happen but actually parts of the book actually do happen in this world. So it's kind of almost that being incredulous while you read it because you do realise, you do recognise some of these things that happen in the world. Yeah. Have you, see, have you seen the the TV show as well? I've seen the first series, but then the first series kind of finished where the first book finished off. So I've kind of thought, well, where are they going to go with the second series? So I haven't really bothered with the second series, but I do kind of want to watch it because I think, um, I recently got told that the series were kind of done in conjunction with Margaret Atwood, so she was kind of aware of where the storyline was going. So it almost makes you feel like if she had written more books on this, then she would have kind of approved of it. So I feel like that's that's okay then. So I will watch watch the rest of the series at some point. Yeah, I actually, do you know, what? it's one of those things. Like I know I should probably watch it or, and yeah, you know, and read the book. But so like it's exactly like you said. I think it it just hits too close to home for me. Yeah. It's like yeah. I actually can't. Um, I can't deal with that with everything else that's going on in the I world. Know, I, know. I know what you mean because sometimes I see it as a bit of escapism, like these kind of programs. But sometimes it is a bit like it just depends on your mood, doesn't it? You really need to be in the right frame of mind to watch, watch or read these kind of things. Absolutely. What about music? Do you listen to a certain um, certain type, a certain genre? Do you have a favorite song, a favorite album? You know, I don't listen to an awful lot of music. I have it on in the background or I have the radio on in the background when I'm working. But I really like the kind of more old school songs. So, you know, um, and a lot of R&B I like as well. So it's probably uh, some pop. So it's more kind of things that were maybe hits, songs that were maybe hits when I was in school. And I don't know if it's that kind of nostalgia or reminiscing, but um, I really enjoy that kind of, those kind of songs. I love the Black Eyed Peas. You know, Where Is The Love? That's one song that I'll always listen to when I'm feeling down. <laughs> yeah. Now, this one, I think I know the answer to, but you never know. <laughs> Are you more of a beach person or mountain person? Oh, mountain. <laughs> <laughs> I'm surprised you had to ask. <laughs> sometimes it's always like, I, it's always embarrassing to ask the question because I'm thinking, I know what the answer is. But sometimes, <laughs> you know, you never know. You never know. Yeah. No, I do like the beach, but I would definitely rather be up a mountain. <laughs> what about food? What's your t- favourite type of food to eat while you're at home? And what's the favourite type of food that you like to eat in the hills? Okay, so in the house, definitely I love my rice. Um, I love kind of any rice, South Asian type, Pakistani type of rice. So it can be made with chicken, lamb, or vegetables, whatever. I just love, I love my rice. In the hills, food, food. I actually really like a, and this is going to make me sound really weird, but I really like a tuna sandwich on the hills. <laughs> and I think it's because I quite like tuna, but it's also quite comforting. I find it quite a comforting food, and it's quite filling as well. So it's got protein. So yeah, that probably makes me sound really bizarre when you compare like spicy rice to tuna but yeah <laughs> yeah I, do you know, I have a love-hate relationship with tuna like sometimes yeah sometimes I, I'm like yes I absolutely love it and then other times I've got to really like psychologically psych myself up to to <laughs> eat it like because when I think about it too much and I'm just I'm like, I know, I know yeah. what you mean. I think that happens with most fish, though, don't you? Or any kind of meat. You, if you think about it too much, if you're not like a vegetarian or a vegan, you can't really think about it too much. Um, but yeah, no, I totally understand that. Yeah. Especially when it comes from the ch- tent. <laughs> <laughs> what do you do for rest and relaxation? So I love, um, like I said, uh, well, watching TV, especially when it's kind of mind numbing almost. It's kind of like easy watching that kind of kind of just distresses me um walking obviously it doesn't even need to be a long walk just even 10 minutes outside and um, walking around the corner around to the local park that's great I love I love my baths I love candles and all that kind of stuff so that'll help as well and then you know sometimes it's just talking and um, talking with someone um having a catch up with a friend or a family member what are the words that you try and live your life by 
I have so many. <laughs> But I'll try and choose one. Um, I think probably the one that's most important for me is treat others how you want to be treated in life. Just because a lot of the time, you know, if you've maybe gone through something or you're going through something and someone just even looks at you wrong, that can kind of upset you or change your whole mood. And I just think that, you know, if that person didn't know what I was going through, then I don't know what the next person's going through. So I just think that's really important, especially in this day and age. And Zara, where's the best place for people to find out more information about you and to follow along with all of your journeys? Probably Instagram. So I'm on Instagram as the underscore hellwalking underscore hijabi. And that's probably where I do most of my posting. I do have a blog. I think I created it like a while ago, like as in when I created my Instagram. But I think I've only ever posted the one blog post. So that's probably not the best place to go. But Instagram, yeah, Instagram probably is. So I'd love for you just to leave some final words of advice to encourage other women to get out into the hills and to have more adventures in their life. What advice would you give them? I would say don't let anything stop you. Even if you don't think that you're fit enough or don't think that it's for you, um, just try a local hill, try a local walk. It doesn't even need to be a hill, actually. I would just say, you know, get outside because honestly, the the difference the positive difference that being an outside in nature makes to your mental health is just amazing and if you're any kind of sort of religious person then I think just being out in the hills and the unkind of filtered untouched natural landscapes it just makes you feel even more spiritual and connected to God so there's so many benefits to be had from being outdoors that I think you know you just need to find what the benefits are for you and it doesn't need to be like I said it doesn't need to be big mountains or big hills just do what you think is right for you but yeah definitely get out there because I think once people do get out there they don't like to kind of give that up because that is their time and just time for them to you know just regroup. Zara thank you so much for coming on the Tough Girl podcast to share more about your passion for hill walking and for encouraging other women to get out there and to follow their passions. Thank you for having me. Tribe, I hope you enjoyed that episode with Zara. What an absolute inspiration. Now, I think that we have talked about today will be available in the show notes at toughgirlchallenges.com. Today's also a very special day as it is the fifth year anniversary of the Tough Girl podcast. Yes, that's right. The Tough Girl podcast has been going for five years. We started on the 4th of August, 2015. And here we are, the 4th of August, 2020. We've got a number of bonus episodes coming out today. So I hope you enjoy those episodes. But I do just want to take a moment to thank thank the patrons and supporters of the Tough Girl podcast who make this all possible. So how I fund the running costs, how I fund the Tough Girl challenges, how I fund uh, me, how I pay myself a wage is through the support of patrons. So patrons around the world who are supporting from $2, $5, $10, $20, $25 a month. It really does make such an incredible difference. And I just want to say a massive thank you to Lawrence Bonimer, A. Galbraith, Stephanie Langridge, Ellen Piercy, Eleanor Drake, MJ, Juliet Townsend, Kerry Flockhart, Natalie Moore, Selena McColl, Angela Walsh. Thank you so much for all of your incredible support. It means so much to me um, every single month when your donations come in. I honestly would not have been able to get to this point without your belief, without your support. And thank you to all of the patrons, everybody who's been signing up and supporting the Tough Girl podcast. Let me just ask you these questions. Have you been inspired by the Tough Girl podcast? Have you been motivated by the Tough Girl podcast? Has it changed your life for the better? If the answer is yes to those questions, then please consider paying it forward. Signing up as a patron is the number one thing that you can do for me. If you can go and visit Patreon, P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com forward slash Tough Girl Podcast and sign up to pledge whatever it is that you can afford, whatever you believe the Tough Girl Podcast is worth, $2 a month, $5 a month, $10 a month. But I also totally understand that maybe you're not in a position to financially support at this point. I totally get that. So what would be amazing if you haven't done already is if you could leave a five star review for the Tough Girl Podcast on whichever podcast platform that you listen to. If you could tell one friend about the Tough Girl Podcast, if you could share the Tough Girl Podcast on your social media. I'm a one woman show with my laptop and my mobile phone hoping to make a difference in the world. And so I just want to say thank you for believing in me. Thank you for believing in the mission, the Tough Girl mission to 
to increase the amount of female role models in the media. Um, I couldn't do it without you all. But wherever you are, whatever you are doing, give it 110%. I hope you've been inspired by the incredible women on the Tough Girl podcast. And that encourages you to go after your own dreams, to think big, to dream big, to take action, to go for it, to to take those steps and to keep moving forward as you strive to achieve your big dreams and goals. Lots of love from me. I'll be back with you next Tuesday for another awesome episode of the Tough Girl podcast. And if you do want to sign up to Patreon, then please do go and visit Patreon, P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com forward slash Tough Girl podcast. <laughs>